Today we're going to be talking about the transaction script pattern from Martin Fowler's Patterns of Enterprise Architecture. Now this pattern is a very simple way of organizing domain logic. It's just a single procedure on top of the database and inside that procedure, that procedure is where your domain logic is located. So since it's all wrapped up in that procedure, it's best used, the transaction script pattern is best used for simple situations, just easy bus business logic. If if that's a thing. And when your business logic becomes too rich, you might have to refactor everything to a domain model, which we're not going to cover in this video, but I'll get to it in the future and probably the next video. So really transaction scripts are kind of an anti-object oriented approach, but that shouldn't scare you away because for simple situations, sometimes all you might need is a transaction script. So I've actually prepared a demonstration here to show you what a transaction script might look like. So the domain that we're working here with here is just the library. So there's multiple types of media. You can have a book, which is type 0, a magazine, which is type 1, and a movie, which is type 2. And these are all the entries in the library. So we have a biography, which is a book. We have Sports Illustrated in the library, that's the magazine. And we have a great movie, Napoleon Dynamite, which is a movie of course. Now we have all this media, you can also check out a media. So we have a media ID here which maps back to a media and we have a due date for that checkout. And what our transaction script is going to do is we're going to allow users to check out media. So we're going to have this checkout service and they can check out media ID 1, 2, 3, they can check out all the media they want. Now I prepared this gateway here and what this gateway does is it basically just interfaces to the database. It's just our helper for this demonstration so we can find media and we can insert a checkout. Now what our transaction script is going to do is it's going to set the due date based on the type of media. So we're going to say like a book can be checked out for four weeks, a magazine two weeks, and we'll say a movie for one week. So that's kind of the domain logic that we're working with here. So we're going to actually implement this. First thing we want to do is we want to get the media from the database. So let's use our gateway for that. It's going to get a data row. Gateway to find media and we'll use the media ID that the user wants. So if that media is checked out, I have this helper here, is checked out. So if the due date column is not empty, that means it's checked out. So if it's not checked out, then we're going to check out this media. And what we need to do for that is we need to calculate the due date. And that's kind of the domain logic that we're working with here. So date time due date equals, we're going to start with just date time dot now. And then let's get the media type because that's what we're going to be using to determine the due date. So media type equals, I'm just going to hard cast this here, media and the type column. It's going to give me the media type as an int. So if it's a book, the media type will be 0 and the due date equals due date dot add days will add 28 days so four weeks for a book then a magazine is type one and magazines can be checked out for 14 days I'm just going to copy paste this and this for a movie, which is type 2, and movies can be checked out for 7 days. So now we have the due date, we have the media type, let's check out the media. We're going to be using our gateway for that, and the gateway is just going to insert the checkout. And the media ID is what the user wants, and the due date. And that should be everything for our transaction script, so we're just this is basically just our domain logic and we're checking out the media. 
Now there's also some other things you might want to throw in here. Like if it's already checked out, maybe you'll throw some kind of exception. And maybe the media type doesn't even equal any of the types. Maybe you'll throw some other exception. Something like that. But this is just an example. So we're kind of just going over the basics, what a transaction script really is. And now that we have this, let's actually test it out. So look at our checkout table. Nothing's been checked out. We're going to check out every media. And let's see what our checkout table looks like after that. So we're done. Refresh that. And we have all of our media checked out. And the due dates are correct based on our business logic. So that's the transaction script. Now, what do I think about the transaction script? Well, I'm kind of I'm not sold on it. I think business logic is usually pretty rich and I feel like if you're using transaction scripts it's just going to be a little bit messy. Now Martin Fowler actually suggests you should have one script per class and the script should be self-contained and because of that you might end up with duplicate code unless you refactor but then if you're refactoring you're basically just you're just switching into a domain model eventually because you're going to have all these classes that replicate your domain. So in the long run, it's probably better to just start off with a domain model and work from there unless you know that it's a very simple situation. So that wraps up the transaction script. Again, very simple domain logic pattern. And next, we're going to be looking into probably the domain model. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.